Hello, 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 lovely people. Welcome to a brand new crime story. And this week is part history lesson, part true crime tale. I did it a little while ago, the history lesson thing with a historical case when I covered Jack the Ripper and you guys seem to really enjoy that one. So we go again, not with the same Jack the Ripper case, with a brand new one, but we go again. The date that I'm recording and uploading this is January the 31st and it marks the 415th anniversary. Yes, 415 years, wow, woo, since the execution of Guy Fawkes the British freedom fighter, terrorist, martyr, and the very reason that we have bonfire night. Sit back, relax, you're about to find out all about him in this week's episode of The Anniversary. Every year on the 5th of November, us people here in Britain celebrate fireworks night. Essentially, it's a festival to celebrate the failure of the gunpowder plot. It's got many names, fireworks night being one of them, Bonfire Night, Guy Fawkes Day, and it was when 13 men plotted and schemed to blow up the Houses of Parliament in London in the hope of killing the Protestant King, James I and VI. Now, most people assume that Guy Fawkes was burned during the foiled terrorist attempt on November 5th. Well, my friends, that is not the story. Yes, he was definitely part of the plot to destroy Parliament, and yes, he is 100% part of the reason why we set off those big things that go bang and make us say, ooh, every single year. But this story doesn't begin and end on that particular November night in the 1600s. Let's get to know Mr Guy Fawkes, shall we? The exact date of his birth is unknown. There are records that he was baptised on the 16th of April 1570, putting him at around 35 years old during the time of the gunpowder plot. His dad was Edward Fawkes, he worked for the Church of England and his mum was called Edith. His dad died when he was a child and his mum remarried. This time she married a guy who was a devout Catholic. Guy Fawkes converted to Catholicism during his teenage years. Despite it being a crime to be a Catholic during the current monarch who was Elizabeth I's reign. And this all happened after Henry VIII mashed up the dance with religion in the 1500s in Britain. It was a complete madness between Catholics and Protestants uh, for such a long time. And this video isn't about the history of religion in the UK. There is a cheeky link in the description for you to have a look at that because Elizabeth was Henry's daughter and it's all a bit of a confuffle. Bottom line is Catholicism in Britain in the 16 and 1500s was a big no-no. In 1542, Guy Fawkes sailed overseas and joined the Catholic Spanish army, which was fighting against the Protestant Dutch forces. In 1603, he had risen through the ranks of the Spanish military and was recommended for promotion to captain. He was known as Guido during this time. I think he changed his name to that and he developed his skills there in gunpowder while he was in the Spanish army. He was also knee deep, waist deep, armpit deep in his disdain for the UK government. He petitioned the King of Spain to wage a war against Britain. That didn't pop off, but Guido Guy Fawkes, he did not, not, not like the monarchy in Britain. It took 18 months for the plot to blow up the UK Parliament to be put into action. There were 13 men, like I said at the start, involved in the scheme and their aim was to kill the king. They wanted to replace him with a Catholic monarch. The 13 men were led by Robert Catesby. Um, he was a uh, described, right, in this article as a charismatic and persuasive man. And I think obviously he got 12 men to think they're gonna blow up the parliament. He definitely, definitely was persuasive. He was joined by Thomas Percy, our good friend Guy and two other men. The reason they picked that date is because that's when British leaders would be assembling for the opening of Parliament. It was new, it was brand new. It was gonna be a huge ceremony, there was gonna be an opening ceremony and they wanted to make a point and also dead everybody. In order to execute their plan, the group transported 36 barrels of gunpowder into the cellar below Parliament. They planned to set the gunpowder alight when King James opened the brand spanking new, never been used Parliament on the 5th of November. This is how they did it. They rented a house in Westminster. They planned to dig a tunnel underneath the House of Lords. Mad thing. If you don't live in London, you may not know that Westminster and Parliament are in the same place. Percy, our friend Thomas, he rented the house in March of 1605 and um, Guy Fawkes, using the alias 
John Johnson took residence there. Some space became available at the bottom of Parliament to rent for storage. Obviously, in 2021, that would never happen. Never happen. But in 1605, why not? You got people making laws. You got the eyes and the nays saying rah, 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 rah. And then you got your old bike in the storeroom because you rented the space. That's where they were able anyway to keep the gunpowder ready to set a light during the ceremony. In the following months, they added eight more members to their team, including Francis Tresham. And he's the guy who everyone believes leaked the plan and done the whole dance. The story goes like this. Francis Tresham revealed the plan to a Catholic nobleman called Lord Monteagle a week before on October 26th. He sent him a letter warning him not to attend the opening of Parliament. The nobleman sent the letter to King James's first minister, who was a dude called Robert. So the jig was most definitely on the rise. It was rise. It was working. Its, the jig was almost. It was on on its way up. The nobleman's servant realised that his boss had let the cat out of the bag, and he warned the other men, including Guy, including Robert, that their plan wasn't going to work. But the police, the guards, the army, the cavalry, the navy never swooped in. Nothing happened. No one knocked at the door at the Westminster house to see if there was gunpowder. No one was arrested. So our conspirators thought they were in the clear. On the night of November 4th, Guy Fawkes was stationed in that storeroom and he was ready to light the gunpowder the following day. He was camped out there and his plan was to light the gunpowder hop, I don't know, in the Thames or something and escape to Europe. There was a search ordered on the Houses of Parliament and the first search actually discovered an unusual amount of firewood in the storeroom but the guards were like, well, you know, fires have to be lit and they didn't take any action. But of course, because of all of the letters and correspondence and warnings about what was happening, a second search was ordered during which the guards found Guy Fawkes and they arrested him. And the blowing up of the Houses of Parliament never happened. Over the next 24 hours, he refused to divulge any information about himself. He didn't give them his name or the plot. And that's when King James authorised the use of torture on Guy Fawkes. He was taken to the Tower of London, which is right next door to Tower Bridge, and is the most famous prison, uh, historical prison. They put Anne Boyle in there as well, in England and he was set to be tortured on England's only rack. Now, I don't know if you know what a rack is, but boy, oh boy. It took two days and he finally revealed his name and the details of the plot. Guy Fawkes was sentenced to death uh, by being hung, drawn and quartered. It was a typical traitor's death sentence at the time. If you've seen Braveheart, you know what it is. If you've seen Game of Thrones, you, you got an idea of what it might be. If you've seen Tudors, you 100% know what it is. It As ways to die go, it's up there with the most barbaric. And it was this day, 415 years ago, that they took Guy Fawkes to the scaffold in Westminster in London. And he did something that turned him into an absolute martyr. He purposely jumped from the scaffold, breaking his own neck and essentially killing himself. By doing this, he avoided being cut down after being hung and having his organs cut from his body whilst still alive. But his dead body was cut into the quarters and sent to different parts of the country where they were put on display for the public to see. Again, very Games of Thrones-esque. The story of Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot has continued to be told ever since. In the 19th century, it became customary to burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes on the bonfire every year on the 5th of November to mark the failure of the plot. And let me be honest with you, before I did this research for this case, I had no idea that them man were gonna try and kill the king and everybody else when they were opening parliament. Opening parliament. Okay, sure. There you have it. This week's anniversary was a history lesson and hopefully you found it interesting. Uh, drop a comment, let me know what you think and I will see you next week for a brand new case. Probably one that's less than 400 years old.